Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Caroline Sakai. Now, we're going to be discussing her fantastic book, Overcoming Adversity, How Energy Tapping Transforms Your Life's Worst Experiences, a Primer for Post-Traumatic Growth. Now, that's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her personal site, tftcenter.com. Now, there, you'll be able to find more information on Caroline herself. You'll be able to find more information on the book, as well as find hyperlinks set up to take you directly to the purchasing page. So one more time, that's tftcenter.com. And I will say, Caroline was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business, Parchment Global Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, move it to Parchment. You can find them at parchmentglobalpublishing.com. And guys, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Caroline here on the line because first and foremost, her book is something that we can all easily relate to. And it's going to have a benefit for everyone, no matter age, sex, doesn't really matter. This is something everybody will be able to pick up and apply. And Carolyn is a PhD in clinical psychology, so you know the information is going to be coming from a very knowledgeable place. And then if that wasn't enough to really tickle your fancy in terms of going out and purchasing the book, all of the proceeds are actually going to go to a foundation that Carolyn actually works with in Rwanda. So you know that this is going to be something that truly, truly is going to a great place. You're going to get a fantastic education while supporting a great cause. Listen, right there in the title, Overcoming Adversity, we know what it's going to go into. Life is just filled with challenges that we're forced to reckon with and overcome. Now, Carolyn has dealt with her own challenges and her own adversity, and that really helped spark this journey to creating this book. And it's something that is going to be so beneficial to everyone involved. And listen, I, like all of you... I'm really looking forward to the education that I'm going to receive because I know that I'm going to be able to pull and take so many tips just from this interview that is going to be so beneficial to my life as well. Sit back, strap in, get ready for a fantastic education. First and foremost, Caroline, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? I'm fine, and thank you, Benji, for the introduction and having me on board. Much appreciate it. Listen, the pleasure is all ours, okay? We're very much looking forward to this. We're very much looking forward to, A, the the education that we're going to receive, helping push forward such a fantastic movement in which you've established already. And listen, I know we have so much information to cover, so let's jump right in. First and foremost, Caroline, what motivated you to write this book? Well, you know, I've been very impressed and very inspired by the courage and resiliency of thousands of people I have seen personally overcoming severe adversities and challenges. And I wanted to capture their stories and spirit in the hope that their stories can encourage and give hope and inspiration to others. Also, I'm almost 80 years old now and starting to get a little forgetful. So I wanted to make sure I recorded their bravery and successes in giving back before I start forgetting too much of it. (laughs) That is fantastic. You know, I'm curious, what has been the most transformative experience in your own life? You know, I think the most powerful impact for me among the many I've seen has been the transformation I've seen, had the honor and privilege to see and witness in Rwanda, where we were working with uh, genocide survivors. Um, We started going 12 years after the genocide. And for example, we started at an orphanage with 400 uh, children there. And they were very depressed, forlorn, scared, having daily flashbacks and nightmares for over a decade. 
before we met them. They couldn't sleep well. They couldn't concentrate. They couldn't really basically learn their education. And after we treated them, we we're working with the thought field therapy that we were having them learn. After their successful treatment of the trauma, they were able to laugh and smile, access fun memories from their lives before wow. the genocide, and were able to focus and learn enough to pass the competitive Rwandan exams within a year after their treatment after 12 years of little to no progress. And they were able to get into the regular Rwandan public schools. And this was so heartwarming warming to us and very inspiring. We also worked with um, the widows and the people that had been so depressed and debilitated with the flashbacks and nightmares and fear and anger that they could not respond to efforts like with Oxfam and others that were trying to help them to be able to survive with uh, industries because they couldn't focus. And after being treated for their traumas, they were able to not only survive but thrive and be able to supply the food for themselves, the people in their community and village. And now they're even having access that they market even to other countries. And that really has been a source of, of joy and inspiration. And most recently, we've been working with the, uh, in the prison in Rwanda. That is absolutely incredible. They, uh, listen, I, I mean, I know you know this already, and, and my listening audience, I'm sure, has already discovered this, but you are the absolute embodiment of a person of distinction. I mean, I couldn't think of a better person to have on our network to really discuss these accomplishments with absolutely so impactful. Now, Caroline, with all the work that you've done with thousands of severe trauma survivors, how do you personally avoid secondary traumatization and burnout? You know, that's a very good question because one of the things that we were uh most impressed with what I have with the thought field therapy is because we do it along with the person and the interpreters when we're in other countries that uh, do it along with us too. So we are actually, by doing it ourselves, along with the person, treating our secondary traumatization simultaneously at the same time. So we were able to work when we first got there, We, because of their limited electricity, we were working from dawn to dusk, trying to see as many people as we can. So maybe each of us were seeing uh, 40 severe trauma survivors in a day and with some horrific stories. And we were able to not only treat our secondary trauma, but also the interpreters were able to do that. I had allotted time for us to debrief in between a few people, but actually no one needed it. They said that we're good to go. So we went to have lunch on our breaks or went to have a meal after we're finished with uh, the last people in the day. And it was uh, people were able to not get the burnout. And I don't think we would be able to do that with hearing and working with such severe trauma mm -hmm. back to back. Again, here in the line with Caroline E. Sakai. We're discussing her fantastic book, Overcoming Adversity, How Energy Tapping Transforms Your Life's Worst Experiences, a primer for post-traumatic growth. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or again directly through her personal site, tftcenter.com. You know, and a follow-up question now really goes off of your personal website, tftcenter.com. Now, once any of our listening audience members go there, they'll realize that TFT is an acronym, and it stands for Thought Field Therapy. Now, Caroline, articulate to our listening audience, first and foremost, what is Thought Field Therapy, and how can one learn it? Yeah, Thought Field Therapy is essentially a self-treatment. And it uses the meridians that are used in acupuncture and acupressure 
which you activate by either tapping or massaging, or it can be done purely mentally by focusing on the point. We have a number of kids in school doing it mentally. We have entertainers who have panic attacks on stage who are just doing it mentally. It addresses the somatical body level manifestations in the body, as well as the conceptual memories of thought. And you can learn it by uh, reading manuals about it, studying that. Better yet, taking hands-on classes that are offered on thought field therapy. And uh, now with the pandemic, there are online classes. And the most uh, direct would be can be done with a therapist or healthcare provider who's trained in it. And I am a clinical psychologist. I use it in my practice, probably I'd say 98% of my practice, and it is covered by all the major insurances. Carolyn, this sounds like something that is absolutely incredible and so beneficial. And, you know, you started to touch up on it when you brought up the pandemic. Now, we know that just in general, as I stated when we first started this interview, adversity is something we all face. And it's something that we always come across. I mean, life just hands that out. But of course, with all the problems, with stress and anxiety, with the pandemic, racial and political unrest and uncertainties in the world creating increasing emotional distress for more and more people, could a self-treatment like thought field therapy help us to cope better and stay healthier? Absolutely. You know, with uh, stress, anxiety, distress, utilizes a lot of our energy to contain and it actually lessens our healing energy in the system to do things like repair the cells and tissues, detox us from pollutants or toxins to our system. And what we can do is boost our immune function. Anything that can help us to be calmer and more relaxed can help our body's immunological function. Mm. And actually, I, I personally had learned it when I was chief psychologist at Kaiser to help with uh, bringing more methods of treatment into our healthcare system in our behavioral medicine program. And myself, I have suffered from SLE, lupus erythematosus, from early childhood, had uh, some severe episodes, including near-death experience in my mid-20s. And I did not expect that this would be something I, I learned it to primarily to be able to help others, but I have actually been able to utilize it myself to manage pain, to have no pain. To, I'm a kind of a, a type A personality, helps me with my anxiety and worry and not getting so stressed. I also had Some addictions like to ice cream and uh, sugar, which, of course, makes inflammation worse. But I was able to really manage that and control that. And my symptoms have been in prolonged remission. And actually, that's why I was able to go to trauma release missions, New Orleans, post-Katrina. And then to Rwanda, I've gone 11 years to Rwanda to work with uh, genocide survivors. And this would not have been possible with having an autoimmune disorder that was very severe. Absolutely. So it has helped me to my own personal health as well. As I started off this interview by saying, not only is the information so beneficial and how it can help improve your life, but Caroline is speaking from personal experience. As she's just stated, she has dealt with her own share of adversity and she's utilized all of the training in her actual life and has seen remarkable benefits from it. Now, I'm curious, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon the journey? You know, I think the, as I started getting into it and there are uh, more and more, the, the book is about how people overcome adversity, and every single person that has been able to overcome their suffering and get to a state of more productivity and health 
has been wanting to give back. And we saw the resiliency. For example, worked with an elder gentleman who had been forced to witness the murder of his wife and, and children oh, um, and who had been severely attacked by Meshadis himself and he had healing wounds on his neck and head. And he, after being working through the traumas, he had been depressed and debilitated for over 12 years. After he got better and he was actually able to not be depressed, also not keep falling because he had, we thought he had neurological problems, but because of the severe traumas, once he worked those through, he also had better coordination and balance and wasn't falling. And so he said he wanted to give back. And so he uh, made an offer with the orphanage that he would take in a couple of kids into his humble home now that he was well. So we constantly saw resiliency in all the chapters in the book that cover different things like depression, anxiety, trauma, phobias, all the people that when they recover, they want to give back, help others. And that has been even more inspirational to look at when people are healthy and well, when they are vibrant, they are that human spirit, the resiliency comes out and the, the love for fellow man and wanting to share their joy and health and to help others come through. And that, I think, has been uh, super inspirational and inspiring and, you know, brings a lot of joy to my heart. The proceeds for your book, Overcoming Adversity, is going to go towards a foundation that you work with. Talk to our listening audience about where the proceeds go, please. Yes, they're going to the Nalani Kaleamana Foundation, the 5013C, that um, I... uh, it was an existing foundation that um, I was able to um, participate with and, and now sit on the board for their uh, international work, like with Rwanda. And the proceeds go to the, the books that are sold from my office are going entirely to that, with funds are working in Rwanda. And also we have our project of folks for vets, and we're working with at-risk and homeless youth and families here. On, in, in Hawaii, and hopefully, if uh, we have enough books that get sold to the publishers, we will eventually be able to get some royalties, and all of the royalties would then be going to the foundation for their healing mission. There you have it. Guys, again, what more can be said? Listen, I, I know that the majority of you are listening in right now, and you've already gone to the Amazon page. You've gone to her personal website. You're looking into purchasing the book as we speak. But for everybody else, first and foremost, I don't know what you're waiting for. And two, I'm going to re-impress it for you one last time just to make sure you got it. Here on the line with Caroline E. Sakai. We just finished discussing her fantastic book, Overcoming Adversity, How Energy Tapping Transforms Your Life's Worst Experiences, a primer for post-traumatic growth. Available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her site, tftcenter.com. Guys, let's grow, let's develop, let's educate ourselves. And once we do that, we lay the path and the foundation for a better tomorrow. Caroline, thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Thank you so much, Benji. I appreciate so much having this interview with you. You're a fantastic interviewer. It's, It's very easy to talk to you.